Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Peter and welcome to another tutorial. This time we're gonna actually make an OAuth uh, authorization for our website and our API. We're also gonna build an API. So what we're gonna do, uh, this is this is the final product. This is what, we're build what we are building. So first of all, we're gonna have a new route called home secret. And if you try to get there, it's actually going to ask you to log in with Discord. And once you do, it's gonna ask you to authorize. And so if we authorize it, you're gonna see that we cannot actually access it. The reason why we can't access it is because only a user with a specific Discord ID can see the contents of it. And currently, um, well, you'll, you'll see the video to see who that is. However, another endpoint that we have is an API, uh, sorry, is a uh, login uh, get token endpoint, which also requires you to log in with Discord, but I already did that, so it's not doing it twice because we store a cookie that we already uh, logged in with Discord, and we get an API key over here, which we can, which we can copy to... Uh, then issue a request from, in this case, from uh, uh, Postman to to this endpoint API subscriber of the month current. And if you send that, you're going to get JSON status back. So that's for the API. So we have an API that only accepts JWT tokens. Uh, and we have a route, a special uh, site on our website um, that requires you to log in with Discord, and in, in our case, it also checks that you are a specific person. You have a, sp you're a specific Discord user. You don't have to do that. Maybe you just want to authenticate people. All right, so let's get right into it. We actually have a website published, and um, in, this, in this part, we're going to talk about APIs. So you might have consumed a lot of other APIs from other websites to get all sorts of data. Uh, for example, the weather data, right? And you might have used it in your Discord bot or any other C Sharp application that you might be developing. Uh, and now it's time for us to actually build our own. So first of all, the first thing we're going to need to know is a tiny, tiny bit about ASP.NET routing. Uh, routing basically is the structure of your URL um, in relation to locations. So for example, you can see that we have two different pages here, home and privacy. Those were generated by default in the uh, MVC template. If we go to home, we just see the basic you know, URL, nothing actually appended to it. If we hit privacy, however, you can see that there is home slash privacy. All right, so this is the route. This is the um, route. Now, where, where does that come from? How do I edit it? Maybe I don't want it to be home, right? So, and that's where we're going to open up our project. And we're going to open up uh, under controllers, we're going to open up the home controller, right? Here, you can see that first of all, this is the first hint, right? Home controller, hence the, the home route, right? The home part of that. So that's a controller. What about the privacy one? Well, there is a method here called privacy, right? So that's the second part of that. It's a it's a home controller and a privacy method. All right, so that's um, that's all fine and dandy. But what if, for the topic of this tutorial, I want to make a new page, right? Uh, we're gonna eventually hide it behind a Discord login, but for now, I just want to make a new make a new I action result uh, page called um, secret. It's going to be my secret, super secret page, right? I'm going to return a view in that. Now, you don't really need to need to know or understand what, what all these means, what I action result is or why we're returning a view or what this view method even is. All you need to know for now is that, hey, like that's how you add a page, you know, because that's how they did it. That's the first step in the controller. And then the second step is inside our views home, we need to have an equivalent CSHTML, right? Just like index has, just like privacy has, right? So we're going to hit right click on the home folder. And we're going to add a new view. Under, so so by the way, home folder meaning under views, views home, right click on that uh, new view, and we're going to create an, an empty razor view. Let's just gonna add, right? And we're going to name it, we need to name it the same as we named um, the controller method, right? So we're going to name it, in this case, um, secret. And there you go. It generates some basic uh, stuff for us. I'm just going to get rid of that. And instead, we're just going to have a, a an H1. It's going to be like a, this is a very secret page. 
and it's just going to be like a uh, shh. Good. So this is our secret page. You could add whatever. You could add the funny images or whatever you have. Uh, now let's test it, right? So first of all, uh, you probably by default have an IIS Express here, right? So what we need to do, first of all, is to click the little arrow button next to uh, next to the run button and select the second option, which is the name of our project. Why we're doing that? Um, so the reason for it is we want to run it uh, under Kestrel, which is the same. It's the environment that we're kind of going to run it or that we already run it uh, on our server. So we want to emulate as, as close to the actual production environment as possible, just so just in case there are some specific bugs. So make sure to do that because later on you might run into an issue uh, with IIS. So the next thing, let's just run it. And it might directly open the secret page because we were on the view. No, it didn't. Okay, good. So we'll, again, this looks normal. We obviously do not do not actually have the button there. We don't, we can't, you know, there's no button that says secret because that's not automatically added, but we do have the endpoint. So that means if we go to home forward slash privacy, um, oh, sorry, not privacy, obviously, if we change it to home uh, forward slash secret, we're going to say, uh, we're going to see this is very secret. This is a very secret page, shh, which is what we wanted. All right, so that's how we make a new, um, a new page. However, this is not very secret. I mean, despite it telling us that it is, it, it, it really not. Um, first of all, it's security by obscurity because ch the fact that you simply don't have a link to it doesn't mean that people are not going to find out about it. And even then, uh, that's usually not enough because what if someone sees someone on this URL or sees it in their uh, history? Well, then of course, anyone can get the secret. So that's, that's the thing. We need to add some more interesting, uh, more interesting um, protection methods. However, before we do that, let's talk about APIs. And we're going to start by creating a new API endpoint. Basically, we need a controller, just like this home controller, really, uh, except with minor differences. So what we're going to do, we're going to right click on the controllers directory, hit add controller. And from this selection, we're going to we're going to select API controller empty. You can see that MVC controller empty. Well, MVC controller would be what home kind of is. It stands for model view controller. And the API controller is what we're after, because obviously we're building an API now. So let's add that. Uh, and in this case, when we're naming our controllers, keep the controller uh, keyword in there. Um, that's just like a, hey, don't don't do that. I'm pretty sure the the ASP.NET framework looks for the controller name when it um, when it does some pre-compilation steps. So first of all, um, of course you can name it whatever you want. I'm just gonna like for demonstration, I'm gonna say subscriber of the month controller because maybe that's gonna be the API, the fake API that I'm building, right? It's gonna give you the subscriber of the month for me, right? So you can see. A couple of things that are um, very unique for an API controller. First of all, the API controller attribute. I mean, that's pretty clear. But it also adds a route. It's like, well, Peter, didn't you say that the route is actually taken from the name of the uh, controller? Well, that's right. However, you can override it. In fact, you can override it with any string that you want. Um, and you can even use like placeholder things like this square brackets controller actually means that that is where the name of the controller will be. So it's not just our URL forward slash subscriber of the month. It's actually our URL forward slash API forward slash subscriber of the month. That's where the API endpoint will be. Well, let's also generate an API method. And even though home controller doesn't really specify the types of uh, requests that uh, you need to um, that this accept, we are going to do that. We're going we're going to do that even though we wouldn't really need to, to get um, to be more to, to understand better what type of requests we're actually serving. So in this case, we're going to start with a with an attribute, so square bracket, and we're going to type in uh, HTTP 
post. You can see that HTTP actually has a lot of different methods like post patch, but those are like really, th those are going to be uh, very important if you're building a REST API. You can search for uh, what that kind of means, but you don't have to, it's not necessary for this tutorial. Uh, for, for now, we're just gonna use an HTTP GET because uh, your browser, your normal browser, by default, if you type in a URL, is going to send a GET request. So that's why we're going to choose GET. And we can optionally provide a, again, a template of, of for um, the, the action, right? So what's going to be after API subscriber of the month forward slash this, right? That's the string that we put in here. And I'm going to say current, right? So this is like going to give you like the current um, subscriber of the month. And then we're going to make this method public. We're going to make it return object. I'm going to explain why in a second. And we're just going to say it, we're just going to call it like current, whatever. This name will be ignored because we have the, the route. We have an override here in the, in the get. Uh, you just need to, you know, standard C sharp rules apply. Like this has to be unique in terms of other methods, you know, that sort of a thing. Um, it doesn't really, well, the signature needs to be unique anyways. So current, of course, that complains because we don't return anything. So we're going to return a new anonymous object. What basically anonymous object is, is we're just going to specify like a new object as if it exists, even though it doesn't. So we're going to, I'm going to come up with some random stuff. So we're going to say like have a status maybe, and it's going to say like, okay, like it just made up nonsense. Uh, and then also, uh, let's say content maybe. It could be like subscribe. Maybe I could subscriber. I could literally just like half the subscriber there. And um, the subscriber of the month is not going to be Drexus. It's Nepumaru. Because he commented on the last video and I really don't want to pick Hellman. So that's the first thing. Um, we could make this an, ex an expression body method just to be like cool. We don't have to. Uh, this is perfectly fine. So this basically creates like an anonymous object, an instance of an object that really doesn't exist. It's like, you know, but it has these properties and um, these values, obviously the instance. And that's why we return an object because it doesn't have a, you know, real type other than object. So uh, in, in a real API, you might have a some sort of a model object maybe you have a user object maybe you have a um, subscriber of the month result object and you would want to return that if you have a type absolutely use it um, but it's, there's nothing wrong with just like generating an anonymous um, object for an api response this is automatically by by the way going to be serialized into json when it um, returns when it gets back from the api all right now that we have that that's actually all we needed to do to make our first API endpoint. If we run the application again, and we go to the route, and don't forget, this this is uh, the, the domain forward slash API forward slash subscriber of the month. This is not a case sensitive forward slash current. If I do that, hey, I'm gonna get, uh, I'm gonna get uh, Nepal Mar here. It's pretty good. Um, and that's, that's it's all fine and dandy, but can we deploy that? Well, yes, we obviously can. <laughs> so let's, let's get that onto our hosted, onto our VPS, uh, so that we can send it to our friends or whatever, right? So first of all, here's a little, uh, improvement, uh, workflow improvement. I created a little, um, PowerShell script, uh, the way you create a PowerShell script is you just create a new text document, uh, name it whatever, and then change the extension from like txt to ps1. And Windows should ask you, hey, um, is that really what you want to do? I'm gonna be like, yes, and it creates that. That's a new uh, PowerShell script. Now to edit it, you can't just double click it, that would run it, right? So we right click on, on that, hit edit. That opens PowerShell ISE. It's kind of like an IDE for PowerShell. Um, and here, this is the script, right? It looks kind of scary because we use uh, the, the two things that you haven't seen from my tutorials yet is pushd and popd. Um, it's basically the same as cd, except uh, it remembers where you were before you before it changes uh, directories, right? So wherever you are, it's just gonna it's just gonna 
remember where you are, move to, oops, yeah, okay, cool. Uh, it's going to move to this uh, path. And then w once you call pop D, it's going to go to the previous location, right? So when I see D, I'm just going to like push D and then right after I'm done with that, uh, all I needed, then I'm just going to pop D. So, and other than that, it's the standard thing. We go into our project directory. Uh, remember, that's your project directory would be the one that has uh, CS proj, program, CS startup. Um, and we're going to run .NET Publish, the, the release version, Linux 64 and self-contained files. And then after we do that, we're going to go to the directory where it is published. Uh, we could have provided an output for our publish so that we don't have to like really go there. But that's that's for future reference. Uh, we just go there. We just go to that publish folder and then we uh, use SCP to copy everything onto our server where our deployed application sits. And then we SSH into our server and uh, using systemd we just restart the website so that, you know, uh, the changes are, um, the changes propagate. All right, well, let's now use it. Let's actually now use it. So I'm just going to be in, I just cd it into the directory where my uh, redeploy PowerShell script is. And then I'm just going to say redeploy PS1. I'm just going to start the script and that's what it's going to do. So it automatically goes into that directory, publishes the thing and then copies all of the files and it goes on the server and reboots the, the application, which is really, really convenient. Um, Cause I don't have to do anything at this point. <laughs> I don't have to remember things. All right, so now that it did that, if I go to um, uh, peter.rest, I can see that, hey, you know, that there's my, there's my website. And now uh, the moment of truth is, first of all, do we have our home secret? We do, very secret. And do we have our API endpoint? API forward slash, um, what do we have it? Yeah, subscriber of the month forward slash current. Yep, there you go. That returns the um, the JSON. And if you think uh, this is, by the way, this is just formatted by um, by Firefox. It, if you hit raw data, you're gonna see what actually gets returned, right? Like this is actually what um, what the server responded with. This is what you would parse in your .NET applications or any other application for that matter. All right, so we're going to get back here and uh, we are going to now work on the authentication because, well, obviously there are a couple of things that we might not want to uh, want other people to see, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to start with the authentication methods and we're going to start all the way in the startup class and we're going to do some magic here. Now, keep in mind, this is not the simplest thing like it looks pretty scary but the thing is you only do this once you set it up once and then you forget about it honestly so what we're gonna do we're gonna have two authentication methods we're gonna have a login with discord and we're gonna uh, use login with discord to authenticate for a uh, for the secret page and we're gonna check if you are a specific user uh, by your discord id and then we're also going to make an endpoint that's also going to generate a JWT token, which is basically like a, a little secret um, after you log in with Discord. And you can then use that secret to access um, some of the API features. Why is that? Why would we do that? Well, first of all, imagine if you are in a, an application like a bot like or like a website and you want to just request uh, something from our API. And we need to know that you that that's actually the application doing it. Well, if it's a bot or your application, it can't really go through the login with Discord. It doesn't. What do you mean? Like it would just like fill in the fields? Like that's not gonna that's not gonna work, right? So that's why we want to generate that little secret that the that then your applications or whatever can use. Anyways, that's the introduction out of the way. So first of all, rule number one is. Hey, if you if you need to if you need to um, make something secret, you use the authorize attribute. This is a secret. This is a secret uh, endpoint. 
or this is a secret route, we're going to add an authorize attribute. Of course, we need to probably add a using directive. Yeah, SPNet core authorization makes sense. So now we have an authorized attribute. That basically means that, hey, like if you try to get there, it's going to be like, oh, you need to, it's not going to call you a ho. That was an o. Um, it's like you need to be authorized. What you can also do, you can apply the authorize um, attribute to an entire controller. So you would like put it here to make all of the endpoints require authorization. But you can then choose specific ones and say allow anonymous, which would then make this one public but everyone else, so, so the, the rules are, it takes the most specific one first, right? So allow anonymous is the most specific one because it's the closest to the method. But if it can't find that, it's going to use the closest thing that it has, right? And so not, there's nothing on the method, but there is something on the, con uh, on the controller itself, on the class. So that's basically how the attributes work. And it works the same way for APIs. Exact the same thing. Authorize. Right? Of course, you need to be using, add the using directive. That would mean all of our endpoint, including my current subscriber of the month, require authorization. And again, you can also put it here. Right? And the standard thing, allow anonymous also works. We're going to delve a li little bit more into the authorized, uh, authorized attribute in just a bit. All right, so now let's go into startup and let's delve into that magic. So first of all, let's scroll all the way into our configure method where we added the headers. And here we're actually going to start by uh, enabling that, uh, enabling authorization by default. So so what we're going to do is at the very top, we're just going to say, well, we could probably add it like here after the forward header, headers. Uh, we're just going to say app dot use authentication. Now remember, this is authentication that we want to use. It also has use authorization, but we're going to use, uh, we're going to, uh, we want the, the use authentication. You can read the differences on uh, MSDN. They have a really good explanation of that anyways. So we're going to use authentication and then in configure services, again, in startup, this is where we're going to uh, configure the whole thing. So first of all, I'm going to do it after the controllers with, uh, add, after adding controllers with views. So what we're going to do is we're going to say services and we're going to say add authentication, again, authentication. Um, we're going to say options and options is going to be pretty sure it's an object, right? So it has, yeah, authentication options and it has, so this is where we're going to, um, configure three things. We're going to configure options dot default challenge scheme. Actually, so, so we're going to configure default challenge scheme. Uh, we're going to do, uh, configure default authenticate scheme and a sign in scheme. Um, for the for the default challenge scheme, we're going to pick cookie authentication cookie authentication default dot authentication scheme. Yep. Uh, which basically means uh, the browser, when when you log in with your browser, you already logged in, it stores a cookie for you. And uh, at that point, it's like, oh, you don't have to re-log in. Like you already have a cookie uh, that verifies it. Like you, you have logged in before, which is good. So the first, that's the first thing. Another option is going to be the default, as I said. Uh, the default authentic authentication scheme. And for that one, we are actually going to use the JWT bearer token, but I think that's a, uh, that's probably a NuGet package. Uh, let's hope that it's actually just a, Ooh, yeah, that's going to be a NuGet package. Um, so what we need to do is go into dependencies, uh, manage NuGet packages. And we're going to browse for the package, probably JWT Microsoft. A yeah, there we go. Microsoft ASP.NET Core authentication JWT bearer. We're going to install that package. It's pretty good. Pretty good.
All right, so once we have that installed, we're going to go back to our startup and we should be able to use this. Um, let me just add the using directive. Like he sees it, he's just like having a little hissy fit. Oh, defaults, right. Oh, uh, it's not default, it's defaults. <laughs> My bad. Um, oh, and by the way, this is a method, so there's no comma. That's just uh, it's an expression. All right. Options. The third one that we want to configure is again default. Uh, well, sign in scheme, and for that one, we're actually going to use the cookie authentication again. So basically, after you log in once, after you go through either a bearer configuration or sorry, either a bearer authentication or um, the Discord sign-in that we're going to set up, you get a cookie. So you don't have to do it every time. So uh, since we're using cookies, we have to add cookie, obviously. Um, and the next thing, we're also using the bear, the JWT bearer token. And for this, we're going to do a bit of configuration, but let's uh, add JWT bearer. And it has its own options that we want to change. Um, it's basically going to be like this. Yeah. Um, so there's a couple of things that we want to. Well, actually, this is uh, I think more complex because I'm pretty sure this has a validation parameter. Yeah, token. Yeah, yeah, token validation parameters. That's actually what we want to set up, and we're gonna create a new instance of that. New instance of token validation parameters. But can we just use this? Can we just like ha add a using directive for this? I don't like that. Yes, please. Thank you. And that's how we're going to configure that. All right, basically. So for the parameters, it's it's just a couple of settings for our um, token validation. So we're going to say validate issuer true, which means like when, when you get a, a, a token, which is it's just like a string. It's like a secret. It's kind of like your bot token, if you're familiar with Discord bots. So it's going to take a look at it and it's going to be like, okay, do I need to validate who created this token? Make sure that it was me. We're going to say yes. Do that. Uh, another one is validate audience. Uh, I'm going to say false here. So this is, do I need to validate or make sure that um, whoever is using this token, whoever whoever is sending me that token, is the target audience. And by the way, both the issuer and the audience is defined as a URL. So it could be oh, it's so like the issuer could will probably be for us um, Peter dot rest, right? That's the issuer. That's who is creating the the token. Now, the audience obviously would be your front end. Maybe it could be it is possible that your audience is the same as uh, the issuer, right? Maybe it's by Peter.rest and it can only be used by Peter.rest, right? That would be good. For, for me, I'm just going to like actually put false even for the issuer because I don't really want to deal with um, configuring it on server side, but we're going to do that at the end of this video, hopefully. If I don't forget it, if I do forget it, let me know um, either in comments or m better yet in on our Discord server, spells.net forward slash Discord. Um, so we're going to also, so we're going to say validate um, uh, issuer signing key. That's going to be true because well, it's just basic security there. And we're going to need a valid issuer and valid audience. That's that's how we defined Define those things, those things. <laughs> uh, a valid issuer. Normally, we're gonna like we're gonna set it up for now. Actually, oh, we're gonna use it. Uh, mm, let's use it. Do we have config? Yeah, we do. All right, so we're gonna use it from the configuration. So let's talk before we do that, because we're gonna set up uh, this, and we're also going to say valid audience. That's what we're gonna set up. And then we're going to get an assigning key, which we're, yeah. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about configuration. You may have seen app settings.json over here, right? In your, in your project directory. It's basically like, Hey, you, you could 
it already comes like sp.net already comes with like a basic json settings there are two more files there, there are well plenty of other files that you can create in terms of settings um one of them that we will create right now is let's just right click on the project hit add new item probably just tags or json does it have json yeah J oh actually app we're creating an app settings one um yeah actually let's just select app settings by us for for that matter and we're gonna call it app settings dot development dot json is already part of the project oh didn't didn't know that all right so let's uh open folder in file explorer oh it already has one yes all right no need to create it i just didn't see it because it's not i don't think it's listed oh it is under apps this is crazy right wild anyways um sure all right so what we want to edit is the development one so in app settings this is where we would like define the structure but we wouldn't fill any secrets uh, and app settings development is where we would actually have the secrets this is app settings development is something that we wouldn't add to like git all right so if you if you have a repository if you don't then obviously you don't have to uh, really care about this but um if you have a if you have a git repository repository just like i do it's worth going to your git ignore and somewhere doesn't really matter where adding app settings dot development dot json just so it doesn't get just so you don't accidentally um, commit this file into your repository because this will contain all of your uh, secrets and tokens all right so that's a quick update now here's the thing we can create our own uh, our own things here our own parameters and we're going to create our own section first and this let's call this jwt um, this is where all of our jwt information is going to be and we need uh for uh, we need issuer and by default uh that would be and i'm editing the base app settings not the development one at first here i'm going to use the the, the local host issuer basically uh, where we're going to use where we what we are going to use uh, for testing so https uh, local host 5001 that's going to be the issuer oops and we're also going to use the audience and https oops again auto space https local host 5001 um so again we're using both the issuer and audience is the same for us although they will be ignored but maybe at the end we will enable uh authentication for that or valid validation of that uh, the next thing that we're going to need is uh an encryption key and it's just kind of like a secret that's going to be used to to hash our jwt token um, uh, it needs to be a fairly long string so i'm just going to use my password manager to generate a passphrase uh yeah actually just a password let's put it like Let's give it like uh, 128 characters it's gonna be fine copy and let's paste that so this is the this is the encryption key uh keep that secret obviously actually now that i say that uh this one in app settings we're just gonna say uh generate a long generate long string here um and then i want to keep that i don't want to overwrite it so i'm just going to add it here as a comment we're going to copy the whole thing that we just created and we're going to paste it into the development section the the development app settings so here i'm going to add a comma paste that in there you go and then i'm going to go back copy the string that i generated and i'm going to uh, paste that here right so now we have the same new values in both app settings, right? In, in app settings JSON, there's the default one, the without anything secret. And then in the uh, app settings that development that JSON, we have the same thing, but, but uh, 
with real values, so to speak. A real test values in this case, because it's not production. We could also, we could and would, ooh, that's actually really, we will also have amp settings.production, the JSON. And if you remember, no, app settings that release the, the JSON, I'm pretty sure. Um, that one is going to be applied for our server, right? So you could imagine that the issuer and an audience is going to be different for, for that. Let's get back to our configuration and now we can use, so now uh, the question is, you know, how do I get this data? How do I get these um, settings? So you can use uh, this little uh, configuration object that we have here. And the way you use it is you say configuration dot get value and you need to specify the type of it, which in our case is a string. And then you provide a path um, for the value inside the, the config, uh, which for us is the category. The first uh, thing is JWT. So we're going to start with JWT. And then we need to put uh, a, a colon to get the inside that and the issuer, I think is the, yeah, issuer, issuer. So that's the path inside the, uh, the config, the app settings. So that's the first thing. Oops. I'm just going to copy the configuration part. Uh, the next thing is valid, um, uh, audience. And we're going to do the same thing for audience. We're going to double check that, that, yep. And the, the third thing is the, uh, issuer signing key, which, uh, ooh, that needs to be a new instance of a symmetric security key, which, yeah, that's fine. And, uh, we need to add an encoding of UTF eight and get bytes of uh, the key that we generated, uh, encryption key, right? All right. So we're going to get, get the bytes of that, um, of that UTF eight string. And, uh, we're going to feed it into our symmetric security key. Um, and that's going to be our issue issuer, uh, signing key. And that's the configuration for JWT. Now, one more option to go, oh, that's it. And that's add OAuth, because now we're gonna add logging with Discord. So uh, the second is probably options, right? Options, I think. And close that, right? It is, although it's probably we want it like this. All right, so this is where we configure all of the Discord related stuff. Well, Discord unfortunately doesn't like let you. Well, the part of the OAuth uh, scheme is that you have to have an application. You have to be registered with sort of Discord as someone who can ask people to log in with them, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to go to Discord. We're going to go to discord.com forward slash developers forward slash applications. And here we're going to create a new application. It's going to be ASP. It's like, well, it's going to be Peter rest, Peter rest, Peter rest. I don't know, man. <laughs> and we're going to hit create. Now this is the same way we would like create a new bot, but we're actually not going to bother making a bot account. So, um, let us pick an icon because I think I have one in the C dev, right? Oh yeah, there you go. Cool. There you go. All right. So here at our bot page, what we're interested in is the client ID and client secret. I uh, don't worry. I'm going to delete this app. So, um, don't, you know, you don't have to, Hmm. Actually, I think I'm going to regenerate the, the secret, uh, eventually. So, um, Hopefully you're not going to be able to get that. So we're going to go into our app settings and we're going to edit a couple of things again. So we're first going to edit, uh, to add a new discord section and in it, we're going to have our, uh, client ID, which is going to be something. And 
client secret, which is going to be something as well. It's like your ID here, well, your client ID here, and then your client secret here, right? That's going to be that. Um, let me think if we need anything else. I don't think so. I think that's good enough. So I'm going to copy that into our development, um, into our development uh, app settings, and we're going to fill it with real data. So client ID, very simple, paste it here. Client secret over here, copy, paste that here. Please don't steal my client secret. Um, then what we're gonna go, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to OAuth two, and we need to set up a couple of things. So first of all, number one thing is, um, we need to sp like specify what we're going, what, what we're going to use, uh, you know, in terms of information about the user. And the only thing that I really want to use is the identify, and they this these are scopes. We're going to use those later. And the only one I want is identify. How did I figure it out, right? What if you're not doing login with Discord? What if you're doing login with Slack, uh, login with uh, whatever, any service, that, or login with Google, doesn't matter. So they're going to have documentation in Discord. It's under OAuth2. Learn more about OAuth2. This is the holy grail of our information. This is all we're going to need. Um, keep this open because we're going to copy paste a couple of things from this. So now that we have these settings, that's fine. Let's go to our startup and we're going to uh, start configuring a couple of things. So first of all, uh, we're going to need the authorization endpoint and we need to, it's like, well, that's Discord's authorization endpoint. It's like, what's that? Well, let's go here. I'll walk to URLs authorize base authorization URL. This is what we need for our authorization endpoint. Easy. Next. Um, next, we're going to define the scopes. So we're going to say options.scope.add, and we're going to add a scope that we like. And I really like the identify because it's going to allow you to uh, get the at me section without an email. So we're going to get an ID of a user, their username, uh, that sort of thing. So I'm going to use the identifier. I'm going to add the item. If you wanted to add more, if you really want like someone's, um, I don't know, email, then you would add an email like that, right? You would add another one. You would add as many of those as you want. Do not chain them. That, that doesn't really work. Um, all right. So that's thing. That, that's something. Next up, uh, we're going to have a callback path. So, so, so we send, so the way this works, by the way, probably should have mentioned kind of how, how OAuth works, is that we're going to take a, a user, we're going to redirect them to Discord, and Discord, um, when he, you know, when the user authenticates, he generates like a little secret for us and sends the user with the secret back to us. We're going to use the secret to get the information about them, and now they're authenticated. We're going to set up a callback path. We're just going to make a new path string, uh, and that's going to be the endpoint. Uh, th this really doesn't matter. We're going to use that. Actually, it does, but let's, uh, it's like all auth maybe. And then, I don't know, OAuth callback is a common one. Uh, you could you could come up with your, your path here. Uh, we could maybe, yeah, 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 this is good enough. So, so he, here is where we need to take this, right? So whatever you generate, you could stick with auth, OAuth callback, it's fine. Uh, you take that, and then you go back to Discord, to your uh, application page, and here when it says redirects, let's add our redirects. First of all, we're going to add the one that is for testing. Because, oh, by the way, if you try to redirect someone back to a URL that is not in here, uh, Discord's not going to let you. It's going to be like, hey, I can't send that information to like a random URL. So we only can, uh, Discord can only redirect people to HTTPS, uh, localhost uh, 5001 forward slash, sorry, forward slash auth. This is, this is where that, uh, this is where this value comes into play, right? So that's the, that's one of the valid ones, but we also accept HTTPS, um, Peter dot rest, 
uh, auth because we actually want to use it on the real live uh, server. So if you try to redirect to anything other than those two, um, you're not going to be allowed to. So that's good. All right. So that's that. Let's continue with our settings. Uh, the next thing is obviously client uh, ID and secret. So we're going to, again, use configuration. Uh, getting the value. Those are strings as well. And again, this one is not under JWT. This one is under Discord client ID. Again, that's coming from the app, app setting Discord client ID. That's how that works. And we're going to do the same thing basically for the client secret client secret that's pretty good and then we also need to specify the uh, token endpoint and again it's like hey what's the token endpoint that is something discord has here token endpoint let's put it there pretty good now the next thing we're going to use is um Oof, uh, bu 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 oh, user user information endpoint. Um, this is basically where we're gonna get all this information from, and this is a bit sketch. This is a bit different. I'm not gonna say sketchy, um, because uh, we need we're gonna get the identify. Uh, we're gonna have the identify uh, scope, so we're going to be allowed to use users at me, uh, which after clicking on it. Is like oh well this returns a user object and this when it says users at me it actually means https uh, discord.com forward slash api forward slash users at me right that's where we get information uh, from uh, discord and then we also want to know what the information is like so we're gonna create they say hey it returns the user object it's like okay click the user object and we have an example example user returned back right so nelly over, over here we can see what, what we're interested in from this json that we get back uh, is the id we need to know the ID and the username. That's all we. That's all I really care for. You, you can care for way more. Uh, remember, you're not gonna get all of it. You're not gonna get email unless you have the email uh, scope as well. So it's just not gonna be there. It's gonna be empty. Uh, so keep that in mind. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna say options dot um, uh, claim actions, and we're gonna use. Uh, yeah, we're gonna use like the JSON method. So here you can use map JSON key which is basically going to, now you can define um, the different types of claims. We're going to talk about claims later on uh, to values in that response. So uh, we're going to use a claim type. Uh, claim times dot. Uh, I'm going to use name identifier for the ID. And for us, it's just ID because in that uh, object, it's just ID. And then we're going to use something very similar, which is going to say claim types dot uh, name for the username. What is it? Username. It's just username. Okay. All right. What if you have an object in there? What if there's another object? Well, what you can do is say options dot claim actions dot map, uh, map JSON sub key, which is going to allow you to go uh, one step forward one step deeper, right? So you can have some, some object, which would be inside this, and then another key inside that, right? If it's nested. Anyways, for us, it's good enough to get an ID and a username. We get an ID and a username. It's all we care about, at least for Nelly over here. Um, I think we still need... B -b -b let me see. Oh, of course, yeah. Access denied path would be probably useful. Discord auth failed, right? That's what we're gonna have as a as an endpoint to that, and we're gonna create that endpoint. Just gonna say it's gonna be a public i action result returning uh, access denied. Oh, no, sorry, what am I typing? Uh, Discord 
false fails. And return a view. There you go. And we're going to make that view in home again. Add view. Uh, empty razor page here. And it's going to be called the same thing, right? It's going to be Discord auth failed. And we're just going to maybe have an H1. It's like, uh, listen, <laughs> listen here. We cannot authenticate you unless you give us basic Discord permissions. So, so the, the user goes here if they go through the OAuth and when it asks, hey, do you want to allow this app to use your data? When you say no, you go here and we say, listen here. <laughs> we listen here, you little snitch. Um, all right, so that's good. That's going to be pretty good. And then the next thing is going to be options. Uh, we're, oh, we're going to define the event for getting actual, getting the actual um, information. So we're going to create a new OAuth events instance, which I think comes from, uh, oh yeah, yeah, OAuth, <laughs> makes sense. And in it, we're going to configure a couple of uh, things. And one of them is uh, on creating ticket, which basically means like, hey, we got response from, from Discord, but we want to get some um, information. So we want to actually parse the claims. So it's going to be an async uh, context anonymous uh, delegate. So we're just going to do something like this. And in it, we're going to just create a request because we need to just like genuinely ask. So this is after Discord gets us back, we get a token. We uh, we actually no, it's one yeah, it's once we get the temporary token and we ask for the real token, and then we ask for the information about Nelly over here. So we're gonna make a new HTTP request message. Right, it's gonna be a new instance of that. Uh, we're gonna make a uh, get method, HTTP method uh, get, yeah, and then uh, we're gonna get options from from our context, which is basically like accessing information that we defined here, um, and we're gonna use the user, oops, user information endpoint. Right, basically. We're going to now try to uh, create a GET request. We're now going to try to create a GET request to... Oh, my flippin... What's up with that? Um, are you sure? Is that genuinely in... Isn't there a different use for that? Uh, we'll have to actually put in the, the full path to the HTTP method for this. Anyways. Now that we have the request, um, we need to add a couple of headers, request headers. Um, we're going to add the accept header and we're going to make a new media type with quality header value. Are you serious? Can we not? You, can you like simplify that? I'm getting I'm going crazy. Oh boy, oh boy. Can we add a using direct? Yes, we can, thankfully. Because that would be quite unruly. All right, and that's going to be application JSON because we that's what, uh, that's what we need and request header. So we're going to add an authorization header, which is going to be a new uh, authentication header value. Yep, and it's going to be a bearer token. Oops, bearer, and that's going to be our, oops, that's going to be our context access token. That's the thing that Discord gave us when someone logs in. All right, once we have that, uh, we're going to get a response by sending the request. Uh, we're going to use the context back channel to send the request request HTTP 
completion options and we're gonna get uh, uh why are there oh yeah yeah sorry i'm stupid uh we need the headers read not the contents read uh oh there's a cancellation token is gonna be context http context um request abort it which means hey if uh, we're in the middle of authentication here and the request has been aborted for whatever reason we want to uh, pass that into this async call so that it can be cancelled if we're still waiting for that all right now we're gonna get the response and ensure that there's a there's a success status code i know this is like a bit magical but bear with me we're almost there we're almost done with this we're going to get a user and we're going to use, oh, we're going to use, this is where we could use Newton sock JSON, but I'm going to just use system uh, text JSON. Uh, I don't know, no reason really. And there's a JSON document. You could use Newton sock JSON here if you have it already added. Um, oh, wait, but I mean, I'm just like trying to use what's in .NET. <laughs> uh, response content. And we're going to read it as a string. Yep. I get the root element. Okay, so that's going to get us our user. And we're going to... Oh, run claim actions, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to run claim actions on the user. So... That's the little, that's that little magic thing here. So what we're doing here basically is we're asking that user uh, information endpoint, which by the way is um, that little at me. And we're going to give it the, we're going to give it a uh, bearer access token uh, because we got it from Discord. And we're going to send that. And as soon as, we, as soon as we get it, we're gonna we're gonna read all of the information in terms of JSON, and we're going to um, run the claim actions, which basically is this: it parses that JSON, it gets the ID out of it as this claim, username as this claim, that sort of a thing. Alrighty, that should be it for the authentication methods. Um, we got a uh, bearer authentication. We got the uh, JWT bear authentication and a discord authentication now now we're gonna start with restricting a single page the secret page with discord right so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our secret thing here and uh around the authorize after the authorize uh after the authorize um attribute we're going to add an authentication scheme and we're gonna pick the Discord one. Discord means basically the same as we typed in here, right? We gave it a name here, Discord. So that's, it's like, hey, whenever someone tries to get the secret, authorize them um, with uh, Discord. And that's gonna force us to do the OAuth uh, flow. So hopefully we're gonna, let's try it, let's try it. I mean, I was trying to think what I forgot, but maybe, maybe nothing, but maybe everything, who knows? Alrighty, so that's fine. And now let's uh, go through the flow. And I'm gonna use instance of Edge because I'm pretty sure I'm already logged in with Discord on Firefox. So we have a home secret, and it points us to Discord. A Discord's like, hey, you gotta, you gotta authenticate. So I will. And after I log in, it's like, hey, uh, Peter Ress wants to access your account. It's like signed in as spell us, not you. Yeah, it's me. Um, gives us a little bit of a uh, uh, a rundown of like what we can actually access and in this case like hey once you author you will be redirected to localhost 5001 as the domain and we're gonna say yeah actually authorize and there you go now we're in this in this very secret page because we actually authenticated with discord now it's good to keep in mind that here's the thing if i stop here we can actually actually here's the thing maybe we don't want to allow anyone who has a Discord account. Maybe we want to actually um, only allow me 
only me, my Discord account is allowed, right? So in that case, I'm gonna say, we can get those two, uh, the, the ID and the username, um, we can get that in this method, as long as we're, we've been authorized uh, with Discord, authenticated with Discord. So we're gonna say, uh, we can get the ID, which is going to be the user claims. So you remember when we said, um, run claim actions, right? It builds those claims that we can access here now, right? So it says user claims, and we're just gonna link get first um, first claim that is of type. Uh, I think we, I think the type was name identifier, right? And then dot value, which is going to be a string. Um, that's fine, we could parse it as a ulong, because Discord IDs are ulongs, but eh, whatever. And then we can get the name, or the username. Uh, it's this, basically the same thing, except instead of name identifier, we just get name, right? Um, that should get us uh, the, the currently logged in user's uh, ID and username, right? And here, what we can do is like, hey, if the ID is not, um, well, what could we, oh yeah, yeah, sorry, if it's not my ID, which I have IDs here, like me, right? If it If it's not that, sorry, if it's not that, and of course you would have probably a service that uh, gets this from like uh, a persistent storage and you know instead of but for an for as an example you know it's like hey if it, if my id is not that you can return unauthorized which is going to be like hmm you can't do that you can't view this page um in our case th at that point because i have my ID, believe it or not, um, it should still allow me in. I refreshed it and it looks like it still allows me in. However, if we change that to someone else's ID, in this case, um, we're gonna use uh, my favorite subscriber's ID, which is a different ID. If I run that now, that should reject me. That should be like, hmm, but that's not you. Or sorry, that's not your ID. So we're gonna try that. Bam, and it says, hey, this page isn't working right now. It says 401, and we know 401 is unauthorized. Okay, so that's how you can limit it to specific Discord users, right? It's gonna be, hey, if it, this is uh, if this is you, you know, or you could be like, sorry, if your ID isn't that, or your uh, username is, you know, it is like Hellman, right? Like you could be like very creative about the different restrictions you could put on different things, right? It's like, hey, I don't, I, you know, I only allow users with this ID and as long as their username isn't Hellman, <laughs> you know? It's like, hey, crazy stuff. Anyways, so we're just gonna, at this point, we're just gonna like, I'm just gonna keep it as, uh, you know what, for, for the hell of it, um, I am going to allow uh, this ID, which I, you know, I already had it in there, which means uh, Nepomaru can actually view the secret on the published website um, and nobody else. Crazy, huh? All right, the next, the next part of our, uh, of our authentication scheme is getting a JWT bearer token and um, using it to access an API endpoint. So here's a, here's a little thing. We can create a, um, let's make a new, oh, I could have just changed it, whatever. <laughs> um, let's make a, a login API controller. But this one is actually not going to be, this one is just going to be like, it's not gonna have the API proof, it's just gonna be like login. Uh, which I think is default, so I can just like, get rid of that. It's not authorized, it's not authorized because, you know, for login you need to, you know, you need to authorize with uh, Discord, but specifically, specifically after that. So we're gonna say, we're gonna have a 
uh, thing that returns an object that's um, let's call it um, get get a token by Discord. Or actually, let's let's have a get token like that. It's gonna be good. And we're gonna add an. Well, this is by the way going to be a an HTTP get on top of uh, just like yeah get token. It's gonna be the same thing, which is the same thing. And I'm pretty sure I don't need to specify that, but I am. I'm gonna do that. Um, and we're gonna again use the authorized thing, uh, authorized uh, header. And we're again, yet again, going to use the authentication scheme of uh, Discord, right? So if you want to, if you want to get a token, you need to authenticate with Discord, which is pretty easy because that's going to go through the whole flow. And then uh, all we really care about is the user ID in this case. So I'm just going to go through the claims and find the first um, claim that is of type. Uh, Name identifier. All right. And we're going to get the value of that. And then here's the thing. We need to generate a uh, key and a, a JWT key. So what we're going to do is let's just get the encryption key first. Uh, oh, um, we need config for that. Now, here's the thing. Here's an interesting thing. Well, you want to use config but you actually don't have it. Here, when you set config with capital C, you were referring to this property. Uh, I configuration, an instance of, I conf of something that implements I configuration, right? And they just injected it with dependency injection. So we're gonna do the same thing. It's not scary, it sounds scary, dependency injection is not. All right, just, we're just gonna create a constructor here. And in the constructor, we're going to request that we need um, I configuration, which by the way, we need to add a using directive for, and we're going to make a, make a private read only instance of uh, that like this, and then we're going to assign config like this, right? So basically we require it in constructor. As soon as we get it, we set it, uh, into this private read only, uh, field just so we can use it from other methods such as, for example, this one. Uh, and we're going to use this config to, of course, get value for our uh, encryption key. So we're, again, referring to app settings. And we need the, uh, we're going to actually need all of these three. We need the issuer, audience, and, encrypt and, 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 mm -hmm, and an encryption key. That's a mouthful. So we're go we go to JWT, encryption key. Um, that's the key. I'm going to need an issuer and an audience. So issuer issues. Mm -hmm. I have issues issuer and an audience audience. Again, this refers to the amp settings. Make sure that it fits. You know, if you named it something else, you'll need to name this differently. All right. So that that's, we get the information that we need and then we're going to make a secure, oops, security uh, key we're gonna make the new the same sort of symmetric um, uh, security key symmetric security key and yet again we need to encoding UTF-8 get bytes of I need to get the bytes of the key and that's how we get our security key and then we also need uh, credentials and those are uh, for that we are going to create assigning uh, credentials and the credentials to design uh, to, to our signing method is going to be the, the security key we need the security key uh, we're gonna need the algorithm specify the algorithm which it's going to come from security algorithms and we're gonna use uh, well, we're going to use HMAC SHA-256. Yeah. Now, 
we're also going we're almost there we're like halfway through this like it's fine it's not a, a, like it's not a hor- it's not as horrific as this you know a lot to start up was let me tell you now perm claims I'm going to make a new list of claims and here's the thing your jwt token that little token that you give people you can put information into it you can put whatever info you want um we are going to put um like a generate like a whatever generated guid um no like real reason for that that's like if you were to create a user account and you had that guid you would want that in there uh, we're also going to put discord id in there uh, as a so so as a demonstration you know uh, so for the claims, I'm just going to add a new uh, claim instance, and the claim has like two parts really. It has the uh, so we use this type and value. Uh, there are some types uh, the, the default names, so it's like JWT like registered claim names. Um, it has a lot of uh, names for common things. We can uh, use JTI. It's part of the specification, apparently. So if we copy that, oops, JTI. Can we get the IntelliSense to like help us a little bit? Because I'm like interested in that link, but it, yeah, it's gonna just like go away. Hmm. And I'm not not copying it by hand. So actually, screw it. And then, uh, so for the for the JTI, we ju- I'm just going to like generate a new uh, GUID and two string it because I don't really care for that. Uh, well, it's like, Peter, why are you adding it? It's like, yes, that's a very good point. I wouldn't, but I just want to show you how um, how to add multiple different claims, right? So, and then, for example, I'm going to make my own claim that's going to be like a Discord ID, right? And that claim is going to uh, get my user ID, which is defined here, right? That's gotten from the claims uh, coming from Discord, right? And that's how I know. Maybe based on the Discord ID, I can just like get uh, my own stored user instance, and he has maybe or she uh, has way more information about that. Who knows, right? So I'm gonna make the token. It's gonna be a new JWT security token. Uh, it has a couple. Of, it has a lot of things. Honestly, uh, we need to provide. Um, so we're gonna do something like this, and we're gonna give it an issuer. Um, can I find the actual, yeah, audience, we're going to give it perm claims, uh, we're going to skip that. So we're going to go to expires, we can say date time dot now dot add ads, just have it valid for a day, right? So maybe your 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 API token expires within you know in a day. Well, maybe actually like thirty days. Actually, no, a week, right? So you have a week until your token that you request this way expires. Uh, and we need signing credentials. Uh, credentials, right? Now we have that. Now we have this token. So what we're gonna do is we're well actually we have the security token, but we don't have it written. Now we need to. I'm gonna say yeah. Create a GWT token this way. I'm gonna say new uh, GWT security to security token handler. That's the one. And we're gonna use write token. And we're gonna use the token here. And this is going to generate like an actual string, an actual token that we can use. What's the problem with this? Oh, it again conflicts. Pretty good. I'll, mm, I like like that. Hmm. Are you serious? What what did I do that it like started to conflict? Eh, whatever. You can I can probably resolve these namespaces if I were careful about. Oh, actually, I'm pretty sure. Oh. Oh, if I do that and then get rid of that, is that gonna work? Yeah. So so basically what I did is I added the thing that it wanted to. I removed unused using directives and then I got it back because there was an unused using directive that collided with that. That's that's why people are like, "Well, I don't why, why would I like remove unused using directives?" Yeah, well, 
this is exactly a reason why you might want to do that period periodically if not auto you know automatically well and then in the end we're going to return a new um an anonymous object instance uh and we're just going to say that there is an api token and it's a jwt token right we kind of do that we respond with a json that has an api token and it has that's it right so however Let's have an endpoint that now let, let's now actually let's go to the subscriber of the month and say that actually this um, subscriber of the month uh, endpoint is actually under authorization, right? So you cannot actually get it until you're authorized. So here that should be basically it. So what we're going to do is we're going to. So that returns that, and that's just a get. So we're gonna see that. We're gonna see that there. Okay, good. So let's test it. Let's give it a give it a test. I'm gonna say get token. That's gonna be it. I thought it was implicit. Apparently, isn't. Let's add the route attribute. I mean, shouldn't really shouldn't be a problem. Maybe maybe it is. Maybe apparently that could be enforced as well. Now the more we know. Now we're gonna do we're gonna try API a login and then we're gonna say uh get token. That is a 404. That's weird. That shouldn't happen. Oh no, that should that was fine. That was fine because I did yeah, I'm stupid. Whatever. No no no, sorry, I'm stupid. Whatever. No no no. It was fine, it was fine. I just like forgot that I don't need the API. <laughs> And I need to log in, so I'll log in. So now I'm gonna give it uh, access. And there you go, that's it, right? So here's the thing. Now, um, this is the response. It says, hey, this is your API token. And I'm gonna copy that. I'm gonna copy that, I'm gonna store that before I lose it. Um, this is my token for like adding, adding information. Uh, sorry, authenticated for the API. Because if I just go to API dot uh, forward slash um subscriber of the month and i do current even though i'm logged in even though i'm logged in um with discord it's still it's just gonna pretend like that doesn't even exist all right because it can't it can't authenticate me for that so it's gonna pretend like it doesn't exist it's a 404 however i'm gonna use something called uh postman it's an application you can so you can download it if you just do postman download um, there you go. You can download it from here. It allows you to test APIs by sending different requests. So what you can do here is, uh, I'm going to change the theme. I'm pretty sure the dark one was unreadable. We can basically try to issue a request, right? So if I try to send the, this get request, it's going to respond with 404 not found. However, if I go to authorization and I add a, um, not an API uh, key, a bearer token, and I paste in that, what is this? And I paste in that token, I'm pretty sure it auto pasted it for me. Um, and I send it now, I get the status back. I get it, right? And it's gonna be, it's gonna be valid until, um, until a week passes, right? So it's gonna be valid for seven days. It's the only way of getting uh, the info from that, uh, from that endpoint. Well, that does it, right? That does it for, um, the authentication method now, we need to think about how do we deploy. We need to create a new app settings for for deployment, for, for like a release, with uh, information that are not going to be uh, compromised. That's option number one. Option number two is you're going to keep um, there are automatic ways of doing this, but I'm not going to I'm not going to do that. I am going to uh, have a different method. The different method is going to be, I'm going to keep a, I'm going to keep it completely out of this repository. So I'm going to take the app settings, the app settings that I JSON, I'm going to copy that. I'm going to go to dev. I'm just going to paste it here. And this is where my real one is going to be for the, I'm going to copy the contents of app settings development, the one that's filled into this, uh, newly copied one. I'm just going to have that be the thing, except I'm going to change a couple of things. This is going to be peter.rest. This is also going to be peter.rest. Actually, the audience, I'm not going to validate audience, but 
if whoops a would be Peter rest uh, because I'm not gonna validate audience because I want you to use uh, a JWT bearer token from different things you could use it from different applications I don't really care so that's that's a thing and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna edit my deploy script and I'm gonna right after I do that right after I uh, after I copy with SCP after I copy that I'm actually going to pop D and I'm gonna go into dev yeah that's it just dev because that's where my app settings is real app settings and I'm going to um, SCP the app settings JSON um, onto my server into yeah there right so I'm gonna then copy the app settings JSON the real one into the directory of the project right so that's how I keep it managed outside of um, of my repository and it's not the best solution there are way better things but for now I feel like this is gonna be all right the difference is you obviously need the issuer and audience um, and we're also going to change in startup we're going to now validate those things because so we haven't been doing that so here in JWT we're actually going to validate the issuer making sure that it is going to be uh, us we don't need to validate the audience because we don't care who has the token as if you have the token, uh, token. Mm -hmm. if you have the token you can use it that's it so that was it that was it so now we're going to try to deploy that uh, redeploy let's see all right you can see that the last thing that was copied was app settings json which should be this one yeah all right so now we can potentially try it out i can go to peter.rest and there you go it's just my website now if i go for an anonymous edge Um, and I try to go to secret. It should, yeah, it redirects me to to authenticating with uh, with this card. I'm gonna say uh, no. I'm gonna say no for this case, and it points me to listen here, you little sh uh, yeah. And then, so so, and you can imagine what would happen if I authorized it, right? It would just go back and obviously figure out that it's not my uh, Discord ID. It would just tell me unauthorized, right? But I want to test the API thing. So let's go to login, uh, get token. This one author auths with uh, Discord as well, except this time I press authorized, and it tells me, oh, okay, that's fine. So here's your token. Here's your API token. And speaking of it, because I already authenticated and I have that cookie, most likely, I I can now go to home secret and it's going to just tell me that it's 401 unauthorized. It's not going to ask me for Discord because I actually logged in with Discord properly. So that would tell me, yes, all right, you're authenticated with Discord. It's fine. And if I, of course, want to go to API, um, subscriber of the month current, that's going to tell me the same thing. It's 404. I don't even know what you're talking about. It just denies it. It flat, flat out denies that something like that exists because you don't have the JWT token. However, if you go to Postman and you have the token in here, and this is a new one, this is a newly generated token, and we don't do localhost except we do beater.rest. If we do this and we send it, then there you go. I get the, I get the subscriber of the month. Now, that's, that's mostly it like we did it right like the thing that i'm gonna do right after i stop the recording is that i am going to um change my <laughs> i'm gonna refresh this thing i'm gonna change my secret so that you guys can't like make apps with that um and that's it we got it deployed so now we have proper authentication with discord for our web and we can do you know all sorts of stuff and uh, play around with uh, different things. So I hope you guys liked the video. If you did like it, 
um, if you want to follow this ASP.NET uh, tutorial, um, then subscribe. Now, please showcase your changes in the uh, your ASP.NET Core Discuss channel. Tell us how, how you did it, how you got it. One thing I'd like to mention is that we went through the OAuth flow and not necessarily through like extensions. There are packages that make it super easy to actually just, you know, have OAuth, OAuth with Discord. We chose to do it manually. Why? Well, because as I said, you can use different services. You can not, you, you don't have to log in with Discord. You could log in with uh, Google, with uh, Facebook, all sorts of stuff. Even some obscure websites that just have the OAuth flow, right? So you could log in with whatever. Um, and there you go. Maybe you have a little button that says log in with Discord and it points you to maybe um, one of those endpoints, maybe a completely plain endpoint that just has the authorization. Right, and that just makes sure that you're logged in, and then you can, based on that, speci specifically show different, um, different stuff. Have secret, have secrets, have fun, and I'll see you guys in the next video.